video is all about the role of a distributor in the launch of a new product. And this video goes through what they do, why you might want to use them, but critically also talks at the end about the cost implications, your margin of employing a distributor to market and sell your product. Well, their role is, as the name implies, to distribute your product. Now, what does that mean? Well, in all reality, there are various things that they will do. For example, they will be the sales people to get your product into retailers. And this is one of the main advantages of using a distributor. They have a sales team with existing relationships with buyers. So if they ring up the likes of Alfred or Argos or John Lewis, you know, they're going to get through to the buyer and in theory have a much better chance of selling the product because they already have an account with that retailer. Now, once the product is sold in, then they can account manage that retailer because getting the product in is really only the first step of the journey. After that, you've got to manage that retailer in terms of training their staff, working out the point of sale display, negotiations annually regarding kind of margins and volume, all of those kind of things. And your distributor will manage all of that for you. After that, their role is also to warehouse your product and then to get the product into the various different stores. And this can be quite complex because a lot of the particularly larger retailers have particular ways of doing things in terms of when lorries can arrive to drop off pallets of product. And your distributor should be well up on all of that and more than able uh, to do that without getting the fines that some of these big retailers otherwise do put on people uh, when they're delivering their product incorrectly according to their system. So a distributor should also manage your customer service. So if anyone struggles when they get your product um, because there isn't one of the things in the box that should be or they can't understand the instruction manuals, then your distributor will be the first line of, of defense against that for the brand in that the customer will ring the distributor number and they will have a customer service team that deals with those kind of issues. Repairs and returns should also be done by the distributor. And this is one of the main things to check out and to make sure that you're not just going to get a whole lot of product sent back to you if there's a problem, but the distributor actually has the capability in-house of dealing with kind of minor issues on the product um, and then returning those products, obviously, if suitable, back to stock. The distributor may also deal with picking and packing your direct consumer orders. So, for example, if you have a website and you're selling product direct to the customer, someone needs to take that out of the warehouse get it address labeled and everything else, and then arrange with the delivery company to send it out to the customer. Finally, and this is a big part of it, some distributors will offer marketing of the product. They would expect the brand to provide a certain amount of assets in terms of product photography, video, description to the product, that type of thing. But then from there, they can often do things like Instagram, consumer shows, marketing in trade magazines, and they'll often handle all of that for you. All of this, obviously, is going to cost you something. And what it costs you is margin. So the distributor will want a margin on top of your product before they sell it to the retailer. Now, in some cases, this just makes the relationship entirely unworkable. It may well be that there is not enough margin in your product for you to have someone else in the chain between you and the end customer. But that's okay. It just means that all of these other things you're going to have to handle yourself because you can't afford to pay someone else to do it all for you. Now, let's look at distributor margins and how this adds up. Let's assume that your product costs £100. By the time you take off the VAT, you're down to £80. And by the time you take off the retailer margin, let's say the retailer wants 50%, you're down to £40. Now, of that, your distributor is likely to want 35%. So by the time you've taken off that, you can see what it is they're then going to pay you. Um, and then obviously you've got your factory gate price to take off of that and then that leaves you what you've got left to use. Now in some models this works, for some companies this simply doesn't work and there's just no way of having a distributor in that chain. There is another advantage that's worth bearing in mind, if you use a distributor often they will buy stock from you. Now not all of them do but some of them do. So, for example, they might buy in container loads directly from the Chinese factories, and they may even organise the shipping and pay for that as part of their margin. 
Now, this can be hugely advantageous because you're suddenly getting a lot of volume in terms of your sales very quickly. And it also hugely helps your cash flow because the distributor is buying the stock off you before it's actually been sold to the retailer. And often retailers don't pay for 30 days or larger retailers, even 120 days. But all of that then is the problem of the distributor, not for you. So to sum up, the distributor can provide a huge benefit to a startup company with a new product because they take all the hassle out of retail sales and maybe even marketing as well as all the logistics and warehousing of your product. However, for that, they are going to want a margin on your product and in some cases this is going to work and sometimes it isn't. Make sure you watch this other video that I've produced all about how to protect your idea if you don't want to go to a distributor to sell your product and then find that they're copying it. So check that out now.